My goal here of this presentation uh, is to essentially show you how to spring your search forward faster than you sprang your clocks forward this morning, sprung, sprang, I'm not sure. Uh, and my challenge to you and everybody watching this is when we're done here to tell somebody that you came to this, to watch it. And the reason I'm asking you to do that is because when you tell them, you know, hey, I went to this job search, you know, workshop to save time. If they care about you, they're likely going to say, how did it go? And at that point, you're going to have a choice. You can either say, eh, it was okay. Some headhunter yapped at us for like an hour. Or you can say, you know what? It was pretty good. I, I learned, you know, these few things. And actually, there was this one tactic he gave me, and I want to try it this week. Can you do me a favor and ask me next week if I tried this thing? And both of those answers are going to cost you the same amount of money. Both of them, you know, you're not going to be more tired saying one versus the other, but one of those choices is going to dramatically increase your chances of speeding up your search. So I would encourage you to ask someone or tell someone uh, that you were here. So this is what I'm going to dive into and try to show you how to save time in all of these areas uh, here today. Finding job leads, how you can make that a faster process, especially for senior positions. Um, job applications so that that doesn't take quite so long uh, to fill those out, how to customize resumes and in that go through some ATS compatibility, um, writing cover letters quickly, preparing for interviews in a much more targeted, focused way, uh, and then how to build your network uh, without having to spend a lot of uh, mental energy getting that done. It'll be a much easier process. So uh, full disclosure, for everybody watching at home, you guys already know this here, uh, but I am very much a process-oriented person. I don't tend to go by gut feel when it comes to really any of these types of processes. I believe that uh, when you have a structure to things, you can get things done significantly faster. So faster results when people see speed up my search or hey, I'm going to show you how to speed things up. Faster results does not necessarily mean rushed results. It doesn't mean rushing through things. It means doing things consistently. So when you have the same process over and over again, you can improve on it and do things faster. Not random. You don't have to say yes to absolutely everything that somebody presents in hopes that you know one of those candy bars they hand you is going to have the golden ticket in it. Um, when you have a set process that's repeatable, you can then test what's working and what's not working. Right? I use this subject line on those 50 emails and only 20% of them were open. But when I changed it to this, now 40% of them are open. So now you know to use the next one. If you're just randomly making up what the subject line is going to be as you send those messages out. And it literally can eliminate stress, which job search can be very, very stressful, uh, especially the more senior you go because it's you've got people depending on you. Um, you are depending on you. And You've to this point always been kind of the go-to person, and when you're in a in a like a sales position, for example, or you're a business owner. We tend to depend on processes so much more because then you know that you're doing the right things, right? You 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 don't find yourself sitting on the couch at eight o'clock at night watching whatever your favorite show is, you know, The Voice, and then in the back of your head you start hearing this other voice saying, "What are you doing? You should be." looking for a job, why are you relaxing? Then you can turn to the voice and say, stop it. I did what I was supposed to do today. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. And if I keep doing this, something good's going to happen. When you are looking for job leads, how long does that, when you're going to sit down and look for non-posted job leads, how long does that take? I've mostly worked with ones that are like, fed to me. Here's a list of blah, 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 and these ones give me a list of blah. Right. So here's the concern with posts, especially for senior level positions. Um, the first resource when I've got a I've got a management level position or a senior security position or you know any senior role, especially in IT, they're going to go through their network first. So they've reached out to everyone in their network. Hey, we've got this position, and if they then need to post it, either. Maybe the management team doesn't have a very strong network, which is entirely possible because not many people work on building out their networks. Um, or they let everybody know who would be a fit 
and none of them wanted it, right? So by the time it gets posted for a senior level role, you need to be extra cautious. Maybe there's something you need to be concerned about with this role. So you want to really vet extra, you know, on those if it's been posted. So you want to spend some time going after those jobs that are not posted, which we'll get into uh, as we go. But just to get job leads, and I can get to those, like I say, at the end, I've got extra slides tacked on depending on time. I don't think we'll be bombarded with questions uh, in here. But um, so when you're going to get leads, your goal is to just get leads. So you're just a lead, meaning a company that hires people who does, who, a company who hires people who do what you do, right? That's it. We're not trying to vet whether you want to retire from that company when you first find the name. That's the biggest time killer when you're looking because you're just like, oh, there's this, you know, XYZ company. Well, it's this far and I don't know about this. And, you know, let me look at some reviews on Glassdoor. And now you've spent an hour looking for all the details if you want to work there or not. Now you go look for your second lead, right? You want to fill your basket full of leads, right? It's kind of like the the uh, laundry basket analogy I use a lot where, you know, when you you get home tonight, you're not going to go and wash the shirt you're wearing by itself that night and then iron it and put it up. You're going to put it in the laundry basket. So at the end of the week, you wash them all at the same time. So you're going to kind of batch process this. Um, so don't vet them, just get the leads. Secondly, chunk it down. So anytime I hire new recruiters uh, for our office at Speed Up My Search, uh, formerly Drive Staff, I would tell them, hey, you're going to make 50 uh, sales calls for this, whatever it is, you know, cybersecurity architect or network architect or Java developer, whatever it is. Find 50 companies who hire Java developers so you can call them tomorrow. And they look at me, eyes glassed over, like 50 companies by tomorrow. Are you out of your mind? And the, the best way to describe it to them and so that they can get in the habit of doing this is to chunk it down. Right? You don't have to go and get 50 leads from the same job board or from the same source. There's lots of sources to get leads. Just get a few from each. So in speed up my search in phase three, the, the network, or I'm sorry, the search mastery section, I've got 10 different resources to go get job leads. Go get five of them from each one of them, or one of them from each one of them, or you know, two or three from a couple of your favorites, whichever you're most comfortable with. Two of my favorites in here are LinkedIn, number one, which on LinkedIn, you're not looking for job postings. Look for people, right? Look for people who do what you do in your area. And then when you find this list of people who do what you do in your area, open their profiles to see which companies hired them to do what you do in your area. And now you have a list of companies who do what you do in your area that you can add. Those are leads into your process. And if you're using a process, you'll then have a designated time and a capped time blocked time of research, when you're going to do that research and specifically what to do with it. And uh, I will show you that in just a minute. We'll flip over to that. Another good one is uh, news sources. So if you go to, for example, Google News, right? Or there's a, no a couple other sources I'll share in just a minute, but you're going to do uh, a Boolean search, if you're familiar with that term. So it's um, a Boolean search is you would, you would put in there like, I'm looking for somebody who's in Chicago or, or Illinois or IL, put that in brackets, right? So it's going to give you the search results will be uh, any pages that have the word Illinois or have the initials IL or, and then it's going to give you, you know, whatever you're, you're, you're looking for. Um, and you can build out this Boolean string. And there are little shortcuts that you can use, like just give me results that have articles with the word hiring in the title. So uh, for uh, the people at home, in title, colon, hiring. And there's no spaces there. Or in title, colon, new jobs. And I have quotes around that so that in the results, 
it's only going to show me titles that have those two words in that order in the title. All right, so then it's going to start returning uh, articles about new jobs that are coming up, about new um, about you know companies that are doing hiring. You want to look for companies that are uh, going to be moving into an area, moving into your area because they are probably going to have jobs soon. Look for companies that have major projects coming up that are going to be started in look for the next month or so. And one of the best, some of the best sources for news articles about these types of um, hiring episodes and, and projects are right under your nose that we hardly ever see. So like when you go to Indeed and you do a search for that type of a position, you'll find a box under there that says news. Click on that and then do your search. On LinkedIn, look for the type of position you're looking for, then click on news. On, um, you know, Monster has the same thing. Gla Glassdoor has the same thing. And you can find news sources from there. So if you find companies that are going to be moving into the area, now you can network in before they post those jobs. Make sense? And let me show you process-wise. So you just get the names, you drop it into the process use a tool called, so this is, and this is, this is the process. You find the leads and you throw them in the job leads column. So let's say IT director at XYZ company. And if you're using Excel or Google Sheets or some spreadsheet, this is a whole other level of tracking searches. But with each one of these stages, you can then have a checklist. I have a checklist that just pops onto the board. Uh, and this is free for anybody who wants this. Um, just reach out to me or sign up for the free level of Speed Up My Search. And as you check these things off, the commute is reasonable. These things you're probably going to know before you add the lead. It's then going to move this over to the next uh, stage in the pipeline, and it's going to add another checklist. These are drag and droppable. So then when you're doing your research and vetting whether this is a good lead or not, this is telling you what to look for so that you don't spend all afternoon figuring out what charities they donate to and whether they're in, you know, environmentalists or they're, you know, whatever. And you can figure that out. And that way you've got a set, consistent way that you're finding your research on each organization. And so I moved it over here. And then the next day, when you go to make a networking attempt, it's got a checklist of things to do and to apply uh, and all the way through. Um, if you were to just get five leads a day, knowing which sources you like, so you can plot them out on your calendar. Tomorrow, I'm going to look for LinkedIn leads or news source leads or uh, look for companies that are hiring recruiters because if they need to hire people to help them hire people, there's going to be some significant needs there um, and, and go through the list of all your different sources, pick one, just get five leads or two leads or whatever you're comfortable with to add into your process. So you can run them through when you've got that designated time. And the reason it only takes 15 minutes to do is because you know where you're going to be looking, you know what you're looking for, and you're not spending hours vetting each lead as you get it. And that in and of itself should have redeemed your daylight saving time that you lost this morning. I hope. So any questions about this? Okay. So job applications. I have heard some people say they spend two to three hours on a single job application. Are you guys doing that? How long do you spend on a job application? I, I spend a fair amount of time. I'd like to speed that up. Yeah. Okay. Applying for a job. Yep. Okay, 15 to 20 minutes, and what if uh, you see that it did not parse all your work history into all those work history fields? Um, based on the format I have, it does. All right, 20 minutes. Um, I bet we can speed that up even. So a couple of tools. One of the great things I love about doing these presentations when I used to do them you know, every month and multiple times a month is it forces me to go look for new tools. And as you go through this process, 
Um, I've always been a huge fan of text blaze, which is a Chrome extension. Uh, but I have since found uh, one called Simplify, which is also a Chrome extension, but it's specifically made for job applications. So if on all those applications, assuming your gender hasn't changed or your uh, background hasn't changed, your age hasn't, you know, you haven't gone into a whole other age group or ethnicity or anything along those lines, you're, you're now a veteran and you weren't or, you know, along those lines, those typical type of questions, that is going to answer them for you as soon as you hit the application. So it's kind of like if you go to, uh, you know, sometimes you fill out a, you know, I'm going to sign up for this webinar page and you've got one of those, one of those little tools that fills, auto fills all your information. Simplify will auto fill applications for you. And you can put in even experience and answers to all those EEOC type questions. Um, and that will save you a lot of time. My caution with that is they do offer, uh, because they are integrated with lots of different application sources, such as like Amazon and uh, they have a, a whole list of them. I'm not thinking of them right now, but you know, companies such as Amazon and Walmart and all these different companies, it will offer to send your application to all of those companies in one click. So 5,000 companies or 1,000 companies, whatever it is, 10,000 companies in one click. The problem of doing that is now you are represented at all those different companies. If somebody you know was going to refer you in there and maybe earn an employee referral bonus for referring you in there, now they can't. If you were going to talk to a recruiter and say, hey, can you get me in there? And they've got relationships and they can help you get through some of the gatekeepers. Now they can't represent you because so you're in there. The Don't do the auto apply to mass companies. You can just do one at a time though. Right. Just as it's on the page, fill in this information for me. All right. Yeah. Blasting your resume everywhere. And you can't customize your resume for each, yeah. each one. And it's, it really does so much more harm than good to apply to lots of positions at once. Uh, text Blaze, this one, um, you know, if it's a smaller company or, or you know, something that this Simplify doesn't recognize, which I'm sure there are tons, um, this is an online shortcut tool which makes things very, very, very easy. And I will show you on my ATS that's up. So hypothetically, let's say that this open field was supposed to have my work history for my most recent job. I use text plays. So if I just write backslash job one, there is my experience from my most recent job in seconds instead of minutes. I didn't have to go find the document and copy it and then paste it. And what about my other experience? Well, here, how about job two? And it drops it right in there. TextBlaze is free unless you want to use some of their fancy bells and whistles, but you can have up to 20 shortcuts in there for free. Um, I do use the paid version of this and it's, it's very affordable, um, but worth it because on LinkedIn, it will uh, put the person's, it'll fill in the first name for the person. It, it'll do, I'll show you. But if this guy, I'm going to just go to this, whoever this is profile, I don't know this person, he invited me to connect. If I had hit accept and then message, instead of writing this guy a big long message back, I'm going to say slash, and now it wrote, thanks for the invite, Madi. I'm not sure how to pronounce his first name but it filled in his name. Right. And if I was like, did I follow up on a uh, proposal, a resume proposal I had sent to someone, the person is local. So I can then click that and it adds additional information to customize it for somebody who's local. So I find it to be a, a great tool that saves a lot of time. So to get Chrome, if you're not familiar, uh, for example, with Simplify, just go to the Chrome web store, uh, for anybody you know watching at home that uh, is not sure how to do this, 
do a search for simplify and jobs. That way you get the right one. There's a bunch of uh, different applications out there with simplify at the beginning and add to Chrome and in the top right corner. And once it's added, a small icon is going to be up there. Same thing for text place. And it's very, very handy. So if you don't have to type at all, because these things are filling in for you, now all of a sudden that job application process goes from 20 minutes down to a few minutes or seconds. And some people will say, hey, uh, what if it's not, you know, why don't we just make the, the resume ATS compatible? Good question. So ATS compatibility, a couple of rules that not everybody knows about um, to make sure that it goes through. Make sure, for one, you don't have any images on your resume. A lot of people, uh, especially that are uh, new you know, to the area, they're, they're applying to positions within the United States for the first time. They'll have their picture on there. In other countries, picture is almost required, I think. In the United States, it is illegal. They cannot know uh, and have any discriminatory information about you, you know, in their application process. So if they have your picture, now they can tell your gender, they can tell your, approximate your age, your race, your, you know, so many different things. And a lot of the ATSs are set up to automatically reject those resumes so that they can't possibly discriminate against that person. So keep those off. I uh, had someone speak at our one of our job club meetings a while ago uh, for uh, talking about icons. So if you just had like a little phone icon next to your phone, um, that, that icon on there would um, break the code for so some of these applicant tracking the systems. Correct. Okay. Would not use any icons okay. anywhere on there. Um, JPEGs, it just can't read but I wouldn't use the icons because for some reason it messes up the JavaScript on the back. And she showed us, here's the script beforehand. I uploaded this resume. Now here's what it looks like. And it was a mess okay. afterwards. Um, so it's going to reject the resume. So, and, and I don't know which ATS she was referring to in that uh, conversation. It was just uh, something one of her developers showed. Right. Exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. There's no reason to risk it. Don't want to put your information in headers and text boxes and uh, tables because the, the ATS has a hard time reading inside of those contained spaces. Um, I would strongly recommend using proper case for your name instead of having it in all caps. That is partly ATS issue and partly um, OCD recruiter issue uh, because with uh, the ATS, first off, if you have acronyms, or designations after your name. So if you've got first name, last name, comma, MBA, PMP, you know, whatever else, CISSP, um, now all of a sudden it sees the ATS, which was looking for two proper nouns, proper names at the top of the resume, now sees five capitalized words that mean nothing to the ATS. It's not going to know that that's a name. So you should put that down in your body and your resume and not No, no. You can put it up there. Just make sure it's capital K-A-R-E-N. But if it's... Right. But if that's following your name in proper case, it will see this is a name. Those are designations. But if your name is in all caps, it's going to see that could be a designation. That could be a designation. That could be... I have no idea what these words are. And it moves on. Correct. Correct. Right. I mean, capital K and, you know, right, right. Uh, capital S, but capital S exactly. Right. So that'll, you know, and you'll know what's happening if you start getting responses that thanks for applying to our job, PMP, you know, or, or CISSP <laughs> or whatever it is. And it's addressing you by one of the other words yeah. uh, in that list. And then the other thing that I think is, is um, for, for whatever reason, people, are, I've, I've explained this a bunch of times and people, I just, I had a guy just come out and tell me he didn't believe me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm telling you this happened and, and I've used an example. So I'm going to show you a screenshot of this so you can see it. But when you have your name written in a horizontal line across the top of the page, as a majority of the professional resume writers out there recommend and do for people, 
there is a glitch in uh, one of my two applicant tracking systems to where it will remove the dot in your email address. So instead of at gmail.com, it's at gmail.com or at yahoo.com. And then when my system automatically replies, I get a, an undeliverable, which then dings my sender rating, right? If you're not familiar, email addresses have a sender rating so that uh, if you, you go below a certain threshold, you automatically go into spam. That hurts my sender rating. So I need to do whatever I have to do to stop that from happening again. And we program our systems to delete those resumes or delete those email addresses. So I have no way of contacting you. And like I said, I had, had someone just tell me, oh, that doesn't happen. So uh, the day after he said that, I had a resume come in, horizontal line, and I blurred out the actual information. Now, this is very texty uh, on here, but um, I'll just show you if you can see Yahoo.com came in. This is, a, you know, the day after he said this, this is just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we didn't have to wait long for it. And you can see on the resume, it says at yahoo.com, but it was removed. And then this explains just what I explained to you. And that's a, that's a problem. So I would recommend not putting it on a horizontal line like that. Uh, a way that you can customize your resume quickly for positions is to, if you haven't done this already or heard me talk about this before, is to save a second copy of your resume and name it your master resume, all right? And this is a resume you're not gonna to send to anybody. This is a repository of information, all right? So that way you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you're applying to a new position and think of how to reword all these bullet points. So this is a, an example of what it would look like. I don't know if you can read it, but a 20 year IT manager is what I put as the address for that person in the address space, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, and then the core competencies for this person. These are the normal core competencies that, that they would have. But if they were applying to an IT operations director position, maybe they've got different core competencies. And these you can then move around so that if they need somebody who's got AWS experience, move that up to where it's the most visible, top of the list, top left, reading-wise. If they need somebody who's got managing a global team, move that up to the left so that it's easy for them to find. To just quickly explain this, because I get a lot of questions about this, um, the applicant tracking systems with their rules, you know, we might as well make this work to our advantage. If we've got to work around their rules, let's make them deal with ours. So you don't have to put your address on your resume. Right? In fact, a lot of people are not, I, I would even say most people are not anymore. Your physical address, street address, I mean. I would definitely recommend and encourage and strongly encourage your location because that way it's going to, to parse your information by the town, but we don't need your street address. We're not gonna be stopping by later that day. You know? So uh, the ATS though, is still gonna be looking for a number followed by two or three proper names mm -hmm. after the number. And it's gonna put that in the street address field. So common rule in sales and marketing, you need to see a product or service three times before you start registering that in your head that this is something I need, All right? So as I parse this person's resume into my system, oh, I should have done that to begin with. That's what I'm talking about. 20 year, 20 hyphen YR, IT manager, comma, Chicago, Illinois. So by doing it that way, the ATS sees that and it's going to put it in my street address field. So now I see as I'm parsing this resume into my ATS, 20 year IT director. That's then backed up by their title, which is IT director. And then down in their resume or the, the text window for the resume, I can see first name, last name, 20 year, 20 year IT director, Chicago, Illinois. So now I've seen it three times. By the time I'm looking at this person's resume, I'm now looking for reasons why I should call this person for my IT director role instead of reasons that I can eliminate them and shorten my list, All right? So if we got to deal with the ATS, let's make it work to our advantage.
So that's master resumes. And then writing experience points with impact. Now this chat GPT thing can be amazing or it can be horrible. Um, there's, there's some dangers with this that um, I will show you. you. There are some people that will have entire cover letters written by chat GPT or entire resumes written by chat GPT. They'll say, here's the job description write my resume to match this job description. And there are actually sites out there that will charge you $50 a month to do that for you. You know, or you can just go to ChatGPT and do it yourself. Either way, the applicant tracking systems, I promise you are not gonna take long to embed some of these, uh, these AI content checkers. There are content checkers already in existence and they can tell whether you wrote that or whether uh, an AI program wrote that for you. And if they see that, hey, this is the, this person's resume is just matching the job because uh, an AI tool wrote it for you, for them, mm, maybe we should hesitate on, on calling this person. All right, now we have to do it manually now, but I would, I would strongly recommend avoiding it to do your entire resume and rephrase things to make sure that it's, it's accurate. Uh, like white lining skills, if you're familiar with that, uh, where a lot of people will still do that, which I'm not sure why, but to, um, to get your resume to show up in searches, they'll put a whole bunch of keywords and then make the font color white. So you can't That's see them. Well, it's always worked, but when we do a search in our database, it then will highlight in yellow, in the middle of a white area on your resume, there's a keyword hidden here in the middle of this ocean. This person was trying to be deceptive and get into your call list. And I'm, I'm gonna mark that so that I definitely do not call that person for sure. So it's a black mark against you if that happens, okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I can't speak for all recruiters everywhere, but you know, obviously you're trying to be deceptive, exactly. And really, why do you want to interview for a position you're not qualified for by putting all these keywords that you don't, you shouldn't? So I'm going to show you um, a tool that I built that everybody is welcome to use. It won't be there forever, but it's there right now. And that is, if you go to speedupmyspeed.com slash AI, it'll forward you to this page. And if you just went to this chat GPT, and said, uh, here's my bullet point, please reword it. You're gonna get a, a monologue on why that's a you know, good bullet point or it's just going to reword the act, put synonyms of the words you have down. It's not gonna be a very helpful tool. But if you're very direct about what you ask ChatGPT, you can get it to write a very impactful bullet. And what I have found to be the most effective as a professional resume writer, as well as a recruiter, uh, I write a lot of resumes for senior IT uh, professionals, is more so than even including numbers, where a lot of people say, make sure you put the numbers in there of I reduced by 20% and I did this and I did that. It still comes down to, here's the thing I did. End of story. Whereas if you can show them that you know why you did that thing, now it doesn't really matter what tool you used as much because you can get to that result through a number of different ways, especially in technology. Well, I used Java to develop this thing so that we could, and it makes such a difference in terms of um, their openness to having a conversation with you. So I built this box specifically to do just that and to, to exaggerate it. I had my 10 year old daughter um, name a profession, and then something that they did. So she said, a geologist. She, she's into science and geology and whatnot. Tell me something that they do. Well, they study rocks. Okay, I know nothing about geology, um, except that they study rocks, kind of like her, unfortunately. Shouldn't say that out loud on YouTube, but whatever. So if you were to put study rocks into this, this is going to rewrite it with the business impact to the company so that you could use this as a more impactful option on your resume. So, and it's gonna give you three options and it's gonna keep them under 125 characters. 
Instead of studied rocks, now it says, conducted research on various types of rocks to better understand their ge geological properties and formation processes contributing to the advancement of the field. So there's a business impact into that bullet point, you know, explored the properties and origins of different rock formations, deepening uh, understanding of the natural world and of its complex geological history. All right, now I'm more IT, so it makes more sense to say developed software in Java, put that in there and click submit. And it takes 10 seconds, 15 seconds ish to, uh, to go, but utilize Java programming skills to design and develop software applications, enhancing organizational efficiencies and driving growth. Here's why I did it, all right? Because I was very specific about the ask in ChatGPT. So um, asking it very specifically, you know, to reword this, set the character length. It's going to be at least 60 characters, but it's not going to be more than 125 or 115 or whatever it is your length of a bullet is on your, uh, on your resume or experience point. Uh, and then also include the reason why the work was important. And that's in my request. So when you're specific about it, that will help. You know, reword this. That has been reworded to make sure it's using some of your own language. Uh, and if you do this for every single bullet point, now most of your content is AI generated. That can be uh, uncovered through one of those AI checkers. But uh, you can either reword it yourself or another tool out there called uh, Quillbot, Q-U-I-L-L-B-O-T. And you can put a bullet point, something under 115 characters or something along those lines or words, and it will rephrase the same thing with the same amount of characters. And you can use that, and that will not be detected as AI generated. And that will help you save significant amounts of time, job to job. And those things you can then add to your master resume. And again, that purpose of the master resume, go to the master resume, swap the bullets in and out from that. Uh, so, that, uh, um, so that you can quickly cu customize instead of having to rethink of all those bullets. Cover letters, same kind of thing, but I would not recommend using chat GPT for this. I'm still looking for good commands to use to keep it smaller than a novel. When you ask it for a cover letter, it gives you something very, very long and not necessarily helpful. Um, the way that I recommend you put together these cover letters, which 50% of the time they're going to be read, 50% of the time, they're not. So why spend hours on a cover letter that half the time they're not going to read? So to quickly match it, I just have three quick paragraphs. And I use a template so that this can make sense for every position that you apply to. Uh, number one, paragraph number one, hey, I was excited to see the title. Fill that in as you go. Post it on your website today. From what I already know about company, uh, in this position, I believe this could be the long-term home I was hoping to find. Make this fit whatever's true for you. You know, truth is more important than anything else in here. And then the next piece of this, three highlights of how you fit the role. So here's a few highlights from my background that match this position directly. I don't use the word perfectly, and I don't recommend ever using the word perfectly because your definition of perfect and mine are probably not going to be the same and how in the world would you know you're perfect for a job you know nothing about from the inside, right? So it's a little presumptuous. I would recommend avoiding that word. And then after that, some sort of a simple close. My goal is to find a quality organization where I can make a positive impact. This opportunity seems ideal. I'll try calling tomorrow to follow up if I haven't heard from you. I'm hopeful to speak with you soon. I'm saying I'll try calling you tomorrow for two reasons. Number one, to let you know I am interested and I am going to follow up. Uh, but two, a lot of people dislike being on the phone as much as you do, you know, as, as the rest of us do. And a lot of people are uncomfortable being on the phone. I'll try calling you tomorrow. Ooh, I better respond. You're going to get some recruiters who don't like making phone calls or talking to people face to face. They're going to call you back. So interview preparation. Now, you could go to ChatGPT and say, please ask me some questions if I was going to interview for, um, you know, a director of DevOps, whatever it happens to be. 
Uh, but you need to be more specific than that. You can be really specific and I'll show you. So you could paste the entire job description in here if you wanted to, and then it'll be very specific uh, in this actual box on this page that anybody's welcome to go use. But I'm just gonna put a job title in there. So here's an IT director with AWS experience. And I'm gonna click submit. And I've asked it to be very specific, so it's gonna take it 10 or, few, 10 or 15 seconds here, especially while it's casting on Zoom uh, at the same time. Okay, here we go. So it is saying, as a hiring manager, some challenging job interview questions for an IT director with AWS experience could be, and here's five questions about leading an IT AWS group. And then it goes on, as an HR director, some challenging questions are, none of them are going to be duplicated. You know, so the first one, tell me about a time when you had to deal with a security breach in an AWS environment. What steps did you take to resolve the issue? Hiring manager might ask that, whereas an HR director might say, how do you approach managing a remote team in an AWS environment? What strategies do you use to ensure that the team members are effectively collaborating and communicating? So they're coming from different vantage points, followed by, here's some advice on preparing for these types of interview questions, and it's got some advice on how to prepare for them. That took 20 seconds to come up, just plugging the job title in there. Um, and it just comes from asking specific questions uh, to chat GPT. So you can do this on your own if you don't want to use that box. The box is there if you want. Uh, you know, first I say, you are a hiring manager for this. So assign a, a point of view to chat GPT. And then specifically ask me five challenging questions that I would get in an interview. And then ask me, you know, now you are a, an HR director, ask five different questions without duplicating any that would be challenging, then give me advice. And it will do that if you want. Now I can't evaluate questions because it's just a, a language moderator. What you could also do is say, you are a hiring manager interviewing me for a Java developers development position if there are technical questions where there is a right and wrong answer and it couldn't ask you the question unless it knew the answer, ask me 10 que interview questions, technical questions, and if I answer it incorrectly, ask me to elaborate further. So ask me those questions one at a time, let me answer you, tell me if I'm right or wrong, and then ask the next one. So put yourself in an interview with it. Um, the approach type questions, it can't evaluate right or wrong if there's no right or wrong answer. But if it's, you know, here's the formula to make that happen or the code to make that happen, you can. Interview influencer doc. So I don't know if we've talked about this as of yet. Um, I think I've, we have talked about this at one point, um, Karen, but my influent, interview influencer doc, I have had numerous IT executives tell me that they have landed jobs because they used this form. And this is for in-person interviews. And uh, you're gonna, as the interview is starting out, pull this page out. And I'm gonna just verify, correct me if I'm wrong here, and totally fine to say, hey, I, don't, I disagree with that. But interviewer, or employers love people who have done their research prior to a meeting. Oh, yeah. Okay. They love people who are prepared ahead of time for the meeting, who have planned questions for them, uh, are organized seemingly, and want to take notes on what's being talked about. I don't think there's any, anything controversial in there. Uh, and people who are interested in them. Right. So here would be an example of an interview influencer doc. And this is in the materials section. Uh, within phase four, uh, which for those at home is the interview mastery course here. Um, on the top half, that is a screenshot of my former, you know, drive staff, my, my IT company prior to making the shift over. So it's different. Um, but this is a page. So now if I had that in my little, uh, whatever you call it, the, the folder thing, I'm losing the word right now. What do you call the thing that you open and close? You're like the lease or whatever it is. 
binder that you would bring in, right? Briefcase. A briefcase, your thing that you bring in where you've got the stuff, the, your, your papers. If you had that out and you say, hey, would you mind if I took some notes and then pulled that out, you know, first of all, asking if you can take notes is a polite, respectful thing to do. They're not going to say, no, no notes. Are you wearing a wire? Right. They're not going to go that route. Um, you pull it out. They're going to recognize their own website, even if it's upside down and on your lap. Right. They'll see their website on the top of that page. I've got this written in big enough prints here. Planned questions and notes. If you have some, some planned questions written on the page, they're going to see that you are prepared for this meeting. You're organized. You've done your research. All of those things they can. That's just a copy on a piece of paper. So on a piece of paper, you're in front of them. Yes, you are in front of them. You've got it in front of you. They can see it. Everything there. Now along the bottom, besides the logo stuff that's there, you can remove that obviously. But I've got five check boxes there. And these are very, very generic check boxes that can be applied to any organization, such as uh, it's going to be a, a, a good culture, good people there. It's uh, challenging uh, or it's a, it's a good commute. It's um, what else do I have on here? It's a, a nice facility, good building, good commute, that X factor, you know, that whatever that extra thing is that you're looking for. And I've got these check box boxes at the bottom. If you have the wherewithal while you're sitting there to be checking them off throughout the interview or as you sit down, whenever there's an opportunity to do so without interrupting the interview. At the end of the interview, they typically finish this interview by saying something along the lines of, do you have any other questions or is there anything else you would like to discuss? Then having this sheet of paper in front of you, you can look down and look back up to them and say, you know what, as I've been looking for uh, the right fit and long-term home, you know, for where I'm going to move next, I've got five different criteria that I've been looking to, to find all in the same place. And I've checked all five of my boxes. So I am hoping you felt this went as well as I did, because I would love to work here. And then drop the microphone and walk. No, um, that really closes it on a very high note and almost provides tangible proof that you are interested in the role and not just words. Hey, I'm really interested in this role. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. Right. Where it's maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but that's kind of what you say at the end. Whereas this provides like proof that you're interested in that role. I've had numerous people, senior executives uh, at large organizations like that have landed jobs because of that. So that can be helpful for you. When you're spending time on networking, uh, first of all, what I find a lot of people don't spend any time on networking, but if you do, how much time do you spend thinking about what you're going to say if you are staying in touch with people on a regular basis, right? How do you come up with something that's going to make them continue to be glad to be hearing from you instead of annoyed that they are hearing from you again, right? Got a planned outreach system, frequency schedules, go through your network and identify, you know, rank, if you will, uh, A, B, and C contacts. And I'm not saying A, B, and C as if it is their value, right? We are all equal value under the eyes of God, right? We're all human beings. We're all valuable people. I'm not trying to be cold and callous, say this person's more valuable than that person. I mean, which one is going to be more instrumental in the progression of your career specifically that you should then stay in touch with, right? So identifying A, B, and C people in your network and then having a frequency schedule. So people who are A contacts or A plus contacts, I'm going to stay in touch with them on a monthly basis or every month and a half or every two weeks, you know, whatever that you're comfortable with. People who are maybe a B you're going to stay in touch with every three months and a C every six months, understanding that people who are B level contacts, you are always trying to move them to either an A or a C. You never want people to sit in that B category. All right. And there's easy ways to do that by maybe asking them if they would write a recommendation for you. If they do, 
Now you know that as an A contact. If they don't, maybe not, or have some other litmus test to move them. But once you've got them in one of these frequency schedules, then you've got a number of ways to stay in touch with them. And I'll show you a few that are on here. So in phase five, it goes through different reasons to follow up with people. And, and uh, I think one of the reasons uh, many people don't stay in touch with their network is because you're trying to think through the messages. When I'm going to stay in touch with my network, that means I got to meet them for coffee. Not necessarily. You just need your name to be familiar with, with them. You need to have it have a recent, um, be top of mind recently. And there's a number of ways to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I am actually going to, I will show you something right here on that. There's lots of ways to stay in touch with people. Yeah. It can be, it doesn't have to be a, let's set up a coffee afternoon kind of a thing. It can be as simple as, you know, I'm going to stay in touch with them every two months. And so this month I'm going to go to their profile, look to see anything that they've posted or shared and click like on it. And just, hey, thanks for sharing. Great article. Good to see your name, Joe or whoever. That's it. They respond. They don't respond. Doesn't matter. They're going to see it. How often do you post something and then just forget all about it? You want to see if somebody liked it or was that worth sharing or, you know, you go back and look at that stuff. If you have a quick comment, they're going to see your name and they're going to like you because you like them. It's easy to like people who you know already liked you. If you like their article, obviously, you're a very smart person you know, or you wouldn't have liked it, you know, kind of a thing. So they're going to they're going to appreciate that. But if you see somebody who's got a birthday out there, click that uh, button that says, hey, you know, happy birthday. But if you're looking for a new position, add a little bit to it. Right. So here's a little extra script for that. And you can just make this a shortcut in text plays. You know, hey, happy birthday, Karen. Uh, I hope you're. A uh, company has a favorite flavor of cake uh, in the break room for you, or has your favorite fa flavor of cake in the break room for you today. And by the way, you know I'm currently in job transition right now and looking for my next cybersecurity role. Uh, so if you hear of any roles like that for me while you're chatting with everybody today in the break room, um, please feel welcome to have them call me. Have a great day. If that's somebody in your network that you don't know all that well, yeah. and it's not going to make any difference show you one way or the other what they're thinking of you you know hey happy birthday and by the way i'm looking for this role exactly right exactly right so and i've got numbers of different you know levels on how to do that but it can be simple things of you know you see a post out there like a public post add your two cents all right there's a uh, I, I i can't recall which YouTuber it was, somebody out there talks about donating, you know, 10 cents a day or a dollar a day or something like, like that, meaning add your two cents in 10 times a day, two different articles, yeah. right? So somebody posts something on cybersecurity, oh, that's a great idea, but I had this and whatever. And what do you think of that? And then people start to get to know you as an expert in that field. You have a good book, you know, that you read, that you loved, put that out there, you know, and say, hey, you know, I think you really like this, uh, whatever it is. Um, that could be. Uh, if you're if you are a poster, a very easy way to post. If you don't want to write your own stuff, there's a site called Feedly.com that posts different articles that you can uh, be specific. Show me articles about these types of things. You can set up an RSS feed for yourself, so it just sends you those. And then you can use whoops, Buffer.com. Can they have a free uh, level of this? where basically you add different articles into a queue, which you then set your queue up to three times a week or whatever's allowed on that free version, you know, Saturdays at noon or Tuesdays at 7 p.m. or whatever your times are, you want to post something. Uh, you're adding stuff into your queue. The next time your queue time rolls around, it will post one of those articles and share them across LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and whatever else. So you don't really have to think about it. Just keep reading articles and learning like you normally do. Add them to your queue. You're posting on a regular basis. Um, they've got free levels. They've got more advanced levels. Um, I use one called meetedgar.com, which also has one called meeteddie.com, uh, which I've uh, 
I have turned off as of recent, but if you've followed me over the years, I've used to post six times a day and that'll start happening again soon. That's Meet Edgar. So I've got close to 300 different posts that are out there. When it gets to the end of my list, it starts over. Whereas like a Hootsuite will get to the end of the list and stop posting because now you're out of posts and you've got to then re-add them all in. I had a question. You know, mm -hmm. I see I'm not sure what you mean, HBE button. Oh, I'm, I, happy birthday. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Happy right. birthday. Okay. Uh, yep. So you're celebrating a birthday. And Adrian, so instead of happy birthday, Adrian, I'm going to put HBD. Hey, happy birthday, Adrian. I hope it's a great day of fun and reflection. Recorded this two minute video, birthday video for you. I hope it's going to inspire a great year for you. Best wishes. And then I've got a birthday video that then goes out to them. It's a two minute, you know, a little reflexive, you know, if, if you were talking to yourself 10 years from now, looking back on this year, you're about to have, what are you going to wish you did this year? What do you want this, this year to be remembered for? Just a quick kind of a deep thought kind of a thing. So hopefully that saved you an hour, uh, at least here uh, today, if you were planning a lead process using text plays and simplify, uh, using chat GPT very directed in a directed manner, making an ATS compatible resume uh, and preparing for interviews and network plans. Um, I know some people will say, you've got me networking more than I did before. That's taking more time or I'm spending more time preparing for interviews than less time. That's actually losing time. But if you think about it, if you interview better than you would have before, you don't have to go on as many interviews and that saves you weeks of time. Exactly. That's going to save you massive amounts of time. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to close on um, just some different job search books that are out there uh, that I strongly recommend. I've got a whole recommended books page on Speed Up My Search, just slash books. Um, but one of my favorites actually has nothing to do with job search, but it's still one of my favorites by Rick Pitino called Success is a Choice. And Rick Pitino is a basketball coach. I don't know if you know who that is, but um, I don't necessarily recommend what he's doing in his personal life. He's got some other things going on there, but the book is really great because it comes down to, um, you know, being successful is not a, a, a fortunate set of circumstances, right? It's not a lucky break. You choose to work harder than anybody else. You choose to come to a workshop like this when you've lost an hour of sleep the night before. You choose to use ChatGPT to reword your bullet points. You're choosing all these different things to be successful or not. And like when you leave here today, you are going to have the choice. Do I tell somebody about this workshop? And what do I say in response? And what you choose to say in response will dramatically improve or not improve your search. Um, and I just think it's a very powerful concept. Right. So um, I do appreciate you guys coming out here sincerely. Reach out to me directly if anybody has questions, happy to answer.